but here's Brock. Start to dive into the Seahawks. How much how many similarities or are there a lot of similarities from what you faced last year with the Ravens? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, the scheme is pretty similar and and how they call the plays and stuff looks similar. Um, obviously, the personnel and everything is different. And so we just got to know, you know, obviously which guys to look out for in, in certain situations. Um, but, yeah, the scheme is very similar. How do you look back on that game against the Ravens? You know, it didn't go the way you wanted it to. So how do you, yeah, how do you just look back on that game? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we've watched it a bunch just in terms of, like, what we're trying to do, what their scheme was against our offense and our scheme. Um, and so watching it, obviously, I'm watching how the game went and the decisions that I made and stuff and, and obviously, like, learning from it. But uh, more than anything, just when I do get in those situations again, like handling handling everything in the right way in terms of getting to my answer and, and you know, taking what the defense gives me and, and those kinds of things. So it's it's been really good watching, but at the same time, like I said, we're playing a, a whole new personnel in, in the Seahawks, and and um, so should be a little bit different in, in that regard, just playing different players. But um, when it comes to scheme versus scheme, it was good to watch the like, game last year against Baltimore, and uh, so it was good. On the last interception against the Cardinals, it looks like you were waiting for Ayuk on the out route, and then the Kittle underneath. I say, as you're walking out the field, you look at the video board. Can you do you in that moment see it? Like obviously went through and kind of grimaced. When you look at the video board, do you see like oh crap? Yeah, I mean, uh, I got hit, and so I'm like, all right, where? How did that happen? With you know our protection that we had on and stuff, and we had two guys come to the side of of where our protection was set, and one guy was free, and so that's on me in terms of getting the ball out and not holding on to it. So, um, in that situation, when I was walking off, looking at the video board, I was like, man, did I miss a guy or did I? just try to get to Ayuk the whole time and uh, not see what was going on with the blitz and stuff. So in that moment, that's what I was thinking about and, and wish I would have executed it differently. The, uh, the stats suggest that you're holding onto the ball longer than any other quarterback, and obviously your scrambles are you know, producing that number. But, but does it feel different than 22 and 23 as far as um, you know, just snap to release time for you? Um, I mean, I feel like there's just been some plays where I'm scrambling and stuff just because, like, what the defense is doing in terms of dropping eight and giving us some different looks in that regard. So, for me, it's more been about keeping a play alive, and and uh, it's been good. And there's also been some plays, obviously, where, you know, we've had, you know, minus 10 or, or whatever from trying to scramble around and stuff. So, uh, there's, I think, those kinds of plays that pop up so that maybe how that's – um, affected the stats with that but uh, for me I still go about my progressions and everything just like I have the last couple of years with our offense and our system um, you know I'm not going into a game going alright I'm going to hold on the ball longer here and try to make something happen it's how can I, how can I be efficient help out the O-line get the ball out of my hands and, and do my job so um, but this, the teams that we've played the schemes that we've played I guess they've done some of that where they're dropping more back in the zone and making me go through my progression and Turns out I'm holding on to the ball. So it's bad, Brock. Is your play action is, is down this year from from what's been in the past? Is that a function of that? When teams are dropping more, you don't want to turn your back because you need that extra time to go through progressions. Or, or what, what do you kind of attribute that to? Uh, I don't know if that's the case. I would say you know um, you got to be running the ball really, really well, and and then setting up certain plays and stuff. And where we're at, um, I think we're running the ball really well. But I think within schemes and and trying to win. With certain plays drawn up, um, for us, it's just been drop back plays. And we trust in the guys to just be able to drop back and, and allow me to go through a progression and, and, and rip it to them. So, um, you know, we're not going into a game saying they're going to drop back a lot. So we're not we're going to stay away from the play action pass. We still have plays dialed up in the play action world, um, but we just haven't had opportunities to, to run them in the, in the right situations or whatnot. But, again, we're trusting in Kyle within all the play calls with that regard. And, and um so it's just sort of just how the, the flow of the game has gone and the play calls have gone. So last year, last year you guys were the number one team in the league in red zone touchdown percentage. This year it's been more of a struggle. What does the film show? How, how would you evaluate what you guys have done in the red zone? Yeah, I think uh, we've had some opportunities, and I think that's an area for me to be better for sure. Uh, trust the plays, trust the concepts, trust my guys, and, um, and being willing to go down there and rip it. I mean, like I said, when I talked to you guys last time after the game, 
you know, the windows get tighter and, and the timing of it is, is quicker and faster. So for me, it's about getting back into a rhythm down there and, and uh, giving my guys a chance. So um, that's probably the biggest thing that I've seen on film. After the game, you and Nick Bosa both said uh, that you need to get back to complimentary football. What does that mean to you? Yeah, man, it's a it's a team sport. So for four quarters, um, you know, when, a def- when the defense gets to stop for us as an offense, it's like, all right, let's pick it up and, and go put points on the board and, and vice versa. When we're rolling, defense get a stop, special teams do their thing. Uh, that's complimentary football. That's how you win in this league. And, uh, you know, if defense is getting all these stops and the offense is cold, I mean, I mean, it's pretty obvious to everybody that uh, it's going to be tough to, to get into a rhythm and, and pull away from a team. And then you allow a team to stay in the game and, and those kinds of things. But the last couple of years when we've won um, pretty well, it's been about complimentary football. Defense gets stops and turnovers. Offense puts up points on the board and we pull away. So um, we both believe in that and everyone here knows that's the truth. It's early, but can this type of game galvanize you based on a little bit of a slow start and knowing what the schedule looks like with a couple of hard home games after this as well, this kind of game rally, you guys? Yeah, I mean, I think every game for us is extremely important. Um, obviously, you get through the end of the season, it's like where you at, wins and losses and all kind of stuff going to the playoffs. So, I mean, everything matters. But for us, man, um, all that matters right now is Seattle Thursday night, uh, getting back into the win column and, and uh, you know, just picking up our momentum, man. That, I think the season is so much about momentum and and uh, obviously staying healthy and, and getting ready for the next game. But for us, man, uh, it's one game at a time. We're not looking too far ahead in the future. And uh, whoever we get up on our schedule for the for the next game, that's who we got. But we're not looking too far into it, and we just got to win. You're, you're scrambling and extending plays has largely been awesome this season. A couple of sweet little ankle-breaking moves, uh, you know, early. <laughs> uh, but when you do have the one, you know, where you run around for 10 seconds and get sacked, is it a reminder of like, oh gosh, maybe I can take this, go too far with this? Or is it just like, okay, if I do this, you know, 12 times and I get sacked once, that, that's just the way it goes? Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on the situation that we're in within the game um, and being smart with the ball, putting my team and my offense in in the best situation possible. If I can make something happen with my legs and and move the chains or get a positive gain, great, let's go. But um, at the same time, knowing that, you know, that's not going to be the case every time I'm scrambling around like it's backyard football. Like I got to be smart, make a couple guys miss maybe, throw the ball away, being, being willing to play with third manageable rather than, you know, trying to make up for it after a 10-yard loss um, with a crazy scramble. So uh, it definitely depends on the situation, but also knowing that, I have confidence and belief in my legs as well to, to make some plays in the right scenario. So, find balance. Your confidence level, though, you've gone in there twice, once with broken ribs, and then last year on Thanksgiving night that you're able to go in that environment and come out with a win. How does that help you comfort and confidence-wise without, obviously, it's not the major emphasis? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, for us, um, it's sort of just a good reminder of, you're going into a hostile environment where they're going to be on you every time we step out in the, onto the field. Got a great defense, great players that we're going against, and a great team. And so uh, every chance and opportunity you get, man, you got to be on top of it. And if you can and execute and play team football, um, some good things can come from it. And, and it feels good when you're able to walk out knowing that you guys did your job really well. And so um, obviously we've learned that as a team the last couple of years, but this is a new year. It's a new team for, for both sides. And and, uh, you know, just got to go in and execute and, and be dialed in every moment. So, yep. Thanks, guys. All right, there it is from Brock Purdy. And here, here's uh, my, my two top takeaways. Number one, obviously Brock has gotten very good. And, and I don't mean to make it sound disingenuous, but there's a lot of accountability there. And I do think that one of the leadership qualities that Brock is very, very good at is he, he is going to – he's going to have his teammates' backs – And he's going to understand that as the leader of the team, you have to remember what I said uh, a a couple weeks ago when we were talking about a different situation. When things are going, if you're the leader, when things are going bad, you tuck everyone behind your back. When things are going good, you push them out to the front. Yeah. And I think he does that very well. The other thing he does very well is sound exactly like Kyle Shanahan. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we no joke. Comcast business text line 925. 
Purdy's Kyle impersonation is better than Dibs. That hurts a little bit, but he's right. And stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. And it, it's funny because as we were listening to that, I was reading the transcript. And so I was anticipating when the stuffs were coming because I'm reading along <laughs> with Brock's answers. And it's just perfectly slotted right where Kyle would do it and stuff. And just, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the question about that, the last interception where he got blitzed and, you know, he looked at the video board and he saw it and like, what was his reaction? He said, yeah. I got hit, and so I'm like, all right, how did that happen with our protection that we had on and stuff? And it's, <laughs> to your point, he's like, yeah, we had two guys come to the side where one guy was free, and then he immediately says, so that's on me in terms of getting the ball out and not holding on to it. Okay, yeah, it is on you, but it's also on the, the blockers, and I know they had yeah. two guys for one blocker, but what you're talking about is really evident to me that – he looks at that play, and he sees what he could have done better, so he's putting himself out there as the one to blame, not the lack of protection or the bad play call or whatever else he could have pointed to. He pointed to himself and what he could have done, and I love that. That's well, leadership. It, it, not only is it leadership, by the way, I think it's, a, it's kind of a good message for the way to sort of approach life, if you will. Brock Purdy has no control over what Debo Samuel does. He has no control over what Dominic Pooney does. Yeah. He has no control over what Brandon Ayuk does. Those guys have control over what they do. Brock is in control of one thing, and that is what he can do better. And there's probably very few moments in any of our lives where we're like, hmm, I was perfect on that one. Right. Like, even if it goes well, like, huh, you know, like that's, I, I don't know, that's the best way to go about stuff, right? Is to look at what you have control over and try to work on that. So he's very, very good at that. Um, I don't know if he's like the most uh, open player that we've ever seen in terms of sharing things that are going to actually give fans to chew on because he does handle it like that. But then again, that's what you want. That's what you want. Yeah. You, you, especially out of a quarterback slash CEO slash leaders, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And I do think a lot of this comes from the fact that he started for four years in college. So he had to do a lot of press in college and he had a lot of adversity at Iowa State. And so he's used to these sorts of situations. And so when you become the, like you call them, the CEO of the 49ers, at least on the field, you're the quarterback of the 49ers, you understand the questions that will come and you understand how to answer them. And he was asked about, you know, them not doing a lot of play action this year and what that's about. And, you know, he gave a very good answer about, you know, the defense is doing certain things and him having faith in Kyle's calls and, you know, whatever Kyle calls, whatever the approach is, they're going to go out there and they're going to run it to the best of their ability.